Okay, so good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am your instructor. My name is Uzma and welcome to CS1, first of all, everyone. And thank you for joining the meeting. I see a lot of you are joining. So just, just like wait for another minute while I let's go and check other things. Yeah, just let's wait for another minute so that like, and I would really like it if everybody switch switches their um, video off, just turn off your video and uh, be muted. I will let you know how to ask questions and all of that. So we'll do that in just a minute. Okay, I'm guessing everybody can see my screen now. Okay, great. Okay, so again, welcome everyone. I am your instructor. My name is Usma, and you can call me Professor Usma, Professor Mushtaq, whatever uh, you like. So I'll be teaching you CS1 this semester, and welcome. First of all, welcome, and thank you for joining. I know many of you might be in different time zones, and it's it's difficult to join this live lectures. So we have uh, options available for you that I will talk through today. And um, okay, so this is the intro lecture. Um, we have uh, TAs and mentors to help you out. We have the instructional support coordinator, Cheyenne. So that's the team. That's the people you will be uh, dealing with throughout the semester. And uh, more information about the TAs and mentors is available on the course website, which I'm going to show you in a while. So before we begin, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the course, and then we'll jump to the resources. Because I know I've, I've been receiving a lot of emails from all of you asking about the resources, where to, to find what. And so to, in today's lecture, I'm going to cover all of that, right? So hopefully uh, all that should be uh, clear uh, after today's lecture. And yeah, I, I understand uh, like, as I've been receiving these emails, there is a lot and this becomes super overwhelming, especially in the online um, mode. And I know it's like overwhelming for me as well, because it's literally like I'm talking to a computer and that, makes things already like complex. Okay, so about the course, the learning outcomes from the course is that you should be by the end of the course able to demonstrate proficiency in the purpose and behavior of basic programming constructs, which is essentially telling you, you should be able to write in the language, which is obviously going to be Python and give instructions to the computer to do certain tasks, right? So that's the first learning outcome. The second is to be able to design algorithms and programs to solve small scale computational programs. Well, we look at this a lot. In fact, problem solving is, I would say, one of the fundamental learning outcomes of the course. So that's something that you'll do a lot in terms of homeworks, in terms of uh, lecture exercises and labs, everything that you'll submit, you're, you will essentially be designing algorithms and programs, programs and do a lot of like problem solving. Uh, the third one is write, test, and debug small-scale programs. Of course, uh, that is something that comes with programming itself, right? When you, you write a program, you test it, you debug it, because obviously it's, it is it is never going to be a case when it's like a, a medium to a large-scale program. It's, it's never going to be the case that it's without bugs. So obviously, we'll do that a lot. And demonstrate an understanding of the application of computational thinking and by computational thinking, we mean not thinking like a computer, but, uh, but but creating these algorithms that facilitate computational thinking, that facilitate problem solving through a computer, right? Through this language that you will learn, which is Python. So that's that, articulate some of the biases that impact. So, so we look at like specific problems and, and try to look at the biases and all of that. So I wouldn't go into a lot of detail now because you'll understand as we go deeper into the course. And then, of course, demonstrate basic capacity at integrating social and ethical awareness into your program, programming and problem solving. So that's the basic learning outcomes from the course. That's what you should expect once you are done. And, and once you finish this course, those are some of the important learning outcomes. Um, okay. Having said that, let's move to the resources, because that's something that everybody is asking me where to find what. OK, so beginning with the textbook. We do have the textbook, but we will provide you with enough material. So this is like optional, I would say. I mean, if you have it, 
really good uh, because I, uh, as far as I remember, it has like more practice questions and all of that. So of course, go ahead if you have it, use it. But most of the material is definitely extracted from the textbook itself. So we will provide you lecture material. We will provide you enough practice material. Uh, so if you don't have it, there is nothing to be worried about, I would say. So that's the textbook, Practical Programming and Intro to Computer Science Using Python. And most likely, um, uh, the third edition is also there, but anything from second edition and onwards is, is, is okay. Uh, okay, going to other resources, which is website and online resources. Everything, and I would like begin not with the website, but rather with submittee. So, like first things first, if you've been registered to the course for quite some time, uh, then you should be able to log into Submitty. So go to submitty.cs.rpi.edu and go and log in with your RCS ID and password. If you registered like in the past one or two days, uh, it, it usually takes 48 hours to get you into the system from the SIS um, list. So if you're not able to log in, just wait for another like 24 hours and then maybe uh, let us know. And uh, that's, so that's the, that's where everything uh, re like related to the course will be posted. So let me actually show you what Submitty looks like. Okay, so here, right? So once you log into submitty.cs.rpi.edu, you will see this kind of page. Of course, this is my instructor page because I'm teaching other courses, but you should most likely see computer science and then you will go in here, right? So again, uh, gradables, nothing is visible to you, so do not panic. Uh, this is my view because I'm the instructor, so I'm like getting the assignment ready and all of that. But that's okay. So under gradables, you will see all the assignments, whatever is due, whatever you're supposed to submit and all of that. So, so look at these tabs on the left, right? So all these tabs lead you to like different places and this is this is where you'll find all the resources that are required for the course, right? So one of the important tabs here is the course material, okay? So if you go to the course material, that's where you'll find the syllabus. And I would definitely recommend everybody to go and please read that carefully. And if you have questions, go ahead and ask. And there is something known as the collaboration policy. That's another PDF that I've posted. Please go in and check that as well. So that's not super important as of now, but it will be going forward because um, this is something that we really, really take seriously. So please, like whenever you have time, just go and check that, right? So those are the two important documents that you must be checking uh, right away. And then every lecture that that, that um, I go over, for example, lecture one today, will be available to you. So you can see like this green is something that's available to you. So in a, in a PDF format, of course, and like whatever other course materials, for example, lab zero, and I'll talk about lab zero in a, in a short while, but lab zero will be available to you, right? So then every week, every lab would be available to you and homeworks will be posted here. So everything you'll find under course materials. Of course, whenever I release a homework, I usually send out an email. So it's not like one day you'll wake up and you'll see that the homework was due and you didn't know about it. So that, that wouldn't happen most likely. But this is essentially where you can find uh, everything. Okay, I think I've been talking and talking, I haven't looked at the questions at all. So are there any questions? If there are, you can just like go ahead and type in the chat window. And I usually take questions like every 10 minutes because um, on my screen, there's so much going on that it becomes overwhelming. So I just like go back and check the chat window every 10, 15 minutes and then try to answer. Uh, Eugene, yes, this is CS1. I'm sorry if I didn't make it clear. Um, Daniel, uh, you're saying, can I ask about something we've not talked about? Uh, please go ahead. I mean, if, if I'm going to talk about that soon, I will just let you know. Um, Okay, will homework be displayed in the gradable section? Yes, and I'll also send out an email before it is. Uh, Eugene, you thought this, okay, so 4100 is like, I'm, I'm teaching it, but it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, what IDE, yeah, I'll talk about IDE soon. Uh, Danielle, you're saying you don't understand the schedule posted? I'll go over that, yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Jay, Jin, Lee, how do we check which lab to attend? I'm gonna go over that then. Yes, Eugene, see you then. <laughs> okay, so all good questions. I'm going to go over almost all of them. So, yeah. Uh, I saw a question appear and disappear. 
Okay, so I have no previous knowledge. Tiger, that's your question in computer program. Is it okay to start with this class? I think it's absolutely okay. We don't require it, although it's good if you have some like prior knowledge, but it's not something that's required. We don't require you to, to uh, know everything. I'm going to start from the basics. In fact, I'm going to come to that. I We have this YouTube channel where I have posted this like intro course. So this is like a three, three and a half hours of videos that you can quickly go over and that would kind of bring you uh, into, uh, yeah. Yes, everything will be posted here. So I'm, I'm coming to that. So let's actually look at this course home. So you have like this link. I'm going to take over the questions like after 10 minutes again, if that's okay. Okay, so uh, look at this link, course home. If you click course home, that will take you to this uh, course website, right? So this is another place where I post all the lecture notes whatever we go over in class, and also the code that we write in, in class, right? So every, everything related to in-class is posted here, including yeah, our, our schedule for the topics of this class, weekly lecture and lab schedule and all of that. So that can be found here, but again, this, this link can be found through somebody. You can directly go to this link as well. So let me just like copy paste it in the chat window, right? So that you have it as well. Right, so this is the course home anyways, but you can go, go to the course home through the uh, submit website as well. Okay, so here, let's go to the schedule here. I think somebody asked, they don't understand the schedule. So basically here, this is like the week. For example, this is week of January 24th. And then this is what you should expect on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm going to come to the lab soon, how labs are going to happen and what we expect. Okay. I think my connection is slowing down a bit. Just give me a minute. Maybe I should turn off my video because maybe I can save bandwidth that way. Okay, yeah, makes that's better. Okay. So here uh, you can see the schedule like week of uh, basically this is like the week of whatever. For example, 24th Jan, that's the Sunday, and then this is what you can expect. And th these are the dates when homeworks are due, but as I said. I will definitely, because sometimes we have to update these dates. So I'm going to be sharing with you uh, when the homework releases and when is it due and all of that. So it's not that that you need to keep a track of that. Of course, like go ahead, keep a track of that and block your calendars and all of that. But but definitely we communicate a lot through email. We communicate a lot through submittee. So I'm going to show you in a short while how to communicate on submittee. But this is like the first uh, link on our course website, right? The next link is the weekly lecture and lab schedule. So this, uh, this is a question that everybody has asked like multiple times. So I'll take some time going over it. Now, when you registered for the course on SIS, right? There is a section number along with your uh, entire course name and course number, right? So basically it, it would be like section one, section two and so on up to I think section eight. So we have eight sections. So based on your section, you can check when is your lab day. So for example, let's say I, I'm in section four, right? So I'll see here, my lab section four is on Wednesday, right? And this is the time when this happens, right? So yeah, so this is 1010. So it begins at 1010 lab section four. And this is the link I should be going to when if I am in lab, lab section four, right? Similar to that, if I'm in lab section two, I see that it's on Tuesday, right? You can see this is Tuesday and it begins at 12.20, ends at 2.10, so and this is the link I should go to, right? So is the lab section and schedule clear to everybody? Okay, so we also have these links directly posted here, right below, so if you scroll down this page, you can see like, okay, I'm in lab section three, so mine is on Tuesday at this time, and this is the link, right? So I have like both here, so make sure that you know your section, and then you go to the appropriate lab. Now, there there is another thing, so basically tomorrow, day after tomorrow, which whenever your lab is due, just go ahead and, and like go to this link and, and join that meeting, right? Within the meeting itself, your T is going to be divided, dividing you into subgroups. So why we do that is because we want to have like interaction during the lab amongst students and with mentors and TAs. So they're going to divide into like subgroups or smaller groups. That is not some something that you should be concerned about or bothered about too much because the TAs and the mentors will anyways do it for you. So just like for now, just go to these meetings and then 
they will let you know like about your subgroup, right? And you will be receiving that email about the subgroups today. But, but again, there's nothing to worry about too much because it's essentially the TAs and the mentors who will eventually let you know once you join your uh, appropriate lab. Okay, I, I saw a few questions. Let me take those and then we can move on. Uh, how do we find which section we are? Uh, if you log into SIS, I think you can go and check which section you've been registered to. Even on Submitty, I think it appears. So you can check both. Uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, Shu, is that how I pronounce your name? The end of the number of your course on LMS. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay, Max, your question is, can we go to another lab time if someone someone comes up during a normal time? See, uh, we are allowing people changing their lab times, but not like this, right? So if, if you are in some other time zone and let's say uh, your lab is at 10, 10 a.m., which is like midnight in some, some place, right? So then you have to reach out to us and I'll show you how you can do that. So basically you have to email to the CS1 um, instructors list and then we can change that. But it has to be like forever. It's not like you can jump from one lab to another like every week. Uh, okay, and if there is some emergency that you miss yours, then uh, please contact your TA. Uh, yeah, Catherine, that's a good question. Syllabus says we have three exams. So I think the syllabus must be saying two to three exams, and then it depends on like every semester. And because this is an online uh, exam, right, as online, uh, semester again, which is not normal. The syllabus was made for like not online, like in person. So I have uh, like we have like arrived at this conclusion. It's better to have like two exams instead of three because exams in an online environment are not that easy for students. And so you will have two exams. That's what I have decided for this semester. And that's why the syllabus says two to three, I think. Uh, Ashley, you're saying I have two classes on Thursday and one of them isn't visible. Oh, two classes. Oh, okay, so that's the exam block. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So when you register, you have the, like on Thursday, there is something at 6.55 p.m. That is the exam time. So that is applicable only to the exam day. Uh, where is the link to submitty? I think I sent out an email about uh, the link to submitty. Let me just copy the link and, and paste it here. Okay, that's that. Uh, do we have to get, okay, I'm gonna talk about Python and all of that in a while. So let's like just only focus on uh, the course material, right? Homework supposed to be due on Friday? No, uh, Daniel, your question is, uh, the homeworks will be due on Thursday, as you can see on the schedule itself. So if we go to here, and if you look at, okay, so I start, that's my bad. I should have put it here. Notes and then homeworks will be due Thursday. Yeah. There is nothing due this week. So there is nothing to worry uh, about this week. So there is nothing due, due this week because we understand that um, there's a lot going on. Like you have to kind of take this in <laughs> because there is like so much to deal with. And so this week, nothing is due. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about what is going to do, do be due every week and, and, and so on. So I'm going to talk about that in a short while. Okay, in addition to the lab, you can uh, you can go and check your, like we have these different office hours and um, their times and days are shown here, right? And we will communicate more about office hours uh, in the coming week through um, uh, the email. So like, please go and check your emails and also I'll show you where else do we post our, our announcements. I'm gonna show you that in a second. But here, this link, weekly office hours and tutoring schedule will show you the office hours for everyone. And office hours can be joined through Submitty, except mine. You can join my office hours just like you joined the lecture. Just like you joined this, the same link, just use that. Uh, the only difference is that it is locked because I allow one person at a time. So if you're placed in a queue, that means uh, you have to wait there because somebody else is in my room. So that's how my office hours are pretty easy to, to uh, sort of follow and they are on Monday and Thursday right after the lecture from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. So you can join it just join, like through this link through which you join the lecture. For the TA and mentor office hours, uh, you have to go to submittee and not sure if you've set that up, but there is this office hours queue. And as I said, I'll post more information here. So basically what you do is some queue is open at the time when somebody's office hour is going on. So for example, you go and 
check the schedule here and you see that okay on monday i need help and you see monday okay this is this is the only office hour that you have in addition to mine of course it's from 4:45 to 6:35 so you will go to submit it during this time and you'll see them uh, like queue will be open here so just add yourself to the queue and enter the information for example your email or your webex or whatever you feel convenient and the ta or the mentor is going to come to you once they reach to you uh, in the queue right so this is going to be a virtual queue and this is how you uh, join ta or mentor office hours and as i said my office hours are pretty straightforward just go ahead and join my webex link okay so that was about office hours uh, going back to how we make announcements so of course whenever i make an announcement it goes as an email and in addition to that there is this discussion forum here right so if you remember this is the email that i sent you it's all, also here so go to discussion forum here uh, i am going to post things and you can post things as well so this discussion forum is, is extremely extremely helpful when in homeworks you are having some issues uh although we restrict you from posting your code and other things here so just like ask a question that's okay and somebody from the tas or the mentors or me one of us would like try to answer that as, as quickly as possible but we discourage people from posting your code here because we do not want people copying code uh, as such so if you're having an, an issue you can definitely go ahead and post here and we uh, try to answer as quickly as as possible but yeah this is something where you can post your questions and uh, even one of you can go ahead and answer you don't have to wait for us to answer so this is something that's like really really useful for students as well uh, okay so this was where we make announcements where you can post your questions where you can have discussions so discussion forum just remember that and please make use of that as much as you can uh, okay so that was that anything that i've missed out let me see yeah so we will talk about this uh, my office hours as i said monday thursday 12 to 1:30 pm via webex just like you joined the lecture just join mine uh, other office hours as i said are posted online and just go and check whose office hour is going on and just go to submit it join the office hour queue i'm going to uh, again make another like exclusive post on joining office hours uh, uh, as soon as i can Okay, coming to lab sections. I think I've talked mostly about like how lab sections are going to work. So uh, that's that. This thing here, like for full credit, finish the lab within your lab period. This was essentially from the the in person version of the class. So we expect you to finish whatever we have given you during the lab. But because this is online and we understand not everything is as perfect as we would like it to be. So most likely, I'll give you more time to finish your lab. So. um uh, as far as i'm like i haven't planned that out yet and lab 0 can be submitted until next week which is like the next lab for example lab 0 begins this week either tuesday or wednesday whenever your lab section is and then i'm allowing people to come back and submit it uh, until next week right so lab 0 i'm giving you exactly one week and even for other labs as i said i will communicate when will that be due usually it used to be due within the lab time but now i give you more time because i understand many of you are having internet issues and you're not unable to join and then we cannot expect you to submit it right then and there so again more information coming up about labs that i'll be giving you more time than usually we we were giving earlier but yeah for lab 0 nothing to worry just go to your labs tomorrow and day after tomorrow and the ta is going to let you know uh, how to submit what to submit and all of that right and lab 0 can be found under uh, course materials on submit so it's there okay. other important uh, gradables as we call them in the course are lecture exercises so this is all that will make up your uh, grades or letter grades right so the components are lecture exercises labs homework assignments uh, tests and the final exam right so every like every lecture exercise uh, like for example we'll have a lecture and right after after that a lecture exercise is due and let me write it here so it's it's due within 24 hours of the lecture except so it's, let me write it right due almost within 24 hours uh, only i'm talking only about lecture exercises and it's due on some day and i'm going to like talk about how Uh, and what to submit except the first three 
Why? Because you are not familiar with how to submit things on Submitty. So I'm going to give you uh, more time. So except the first three lectures and by first three lectures, I mean for lecture one, which is today, nothing is due. So don't worry about that at all. Uh, first three lectures, I mean lecture two, three and four. I'll give you more time than 24 hours for these three because obviously understand that you're not familiar with how to submit on Submitty and we are going, this is not due within 24 hours. Most likely this like two and three, you can submit with your uh, lab TA uh, during your lab one. And in lab one, we make you get acquainted with with the like submission process. And so that's why we don't expect lecture two, three and four to be submitted. Within 24 hours, I'm going to give you more time. Okay, but starting from lecture five, right? So from lecture five onwards, uh, five onwards, it will be due like within 24 hours after the lecture is over. Basically, uh, our lecture will be done at 11.30 a.m., right? And next day, uh, your uh, lecture exercise will be due at 2 p.m., right? So still more than 24 hours. So that's how from lecture five onwards, this is going to happen. Okay, so that's lecture exercises. And then labs, as I said, so there is a lab almost every week, except we announce otherwise, right? And labs are meant for students to go and work like within the lab period. That's what we expect. But I release them a little like before the actual lab period. So most likely I will release it like by Sunday or Monday. And you have to work on, on that on Tuesday and Wednesday. And as I said, uh, I will announce most likely I'll give you more time than the just like that those two hours of your lab to submit them. Right. So you will have like three to four days to submit labs most likely. So three to four days for labs. And then there are homework assignments that are almost like every week, except for a few long ones in which we give you two um, weeks to finish those. Uh, tests, so again, two tests and one exam, one final, two tests plus one final. More information will be shared like we go forward. So not to worry anything as of now, right? So this is all that we have, and this is what's going to make up your final grade. Okay, uh, about appealing grades. So of course, for every gradable except lecture exercises, like for labs and homework assignments, on Submitty, you can appeal for your grade, uh, grade if you feel like there was something in the um, grading and so on. And for every like homework assignment in lab, I usually make an announcement that like uh, you can appeal now or you can go and, and Put a grade inquiry at least so that we can go ahead and, and check if there was something that was wrong. Okay, uh, about class attendance and participation, I highly encourage that. Uh, although I'll have, and I'll show you, I'll have like recorded lectures posted on my YouTube channel and we have pre-recorded lectures available as well. But then sitting like in isolation and watching a lecture versus like coming here and asking questions, I think is better. So I encourage that, but we don't like, at least I don't take uh, attendance. So it's up to you, it's, it's optional. If you want to like check out the recording later on, it's, it's totally up to you. So I don't uh, take attendance. I saw a few questions, let me go. In. Uh, oh, thank you, John, for posting the channel. Yeah, I was about to do that. Uh, how can I find the three hour intro video on YouTube, Lubna? Yeah, I'm going to show you that. It's not a video, actually, it's a playlist. So that's like basics of Python, and then you can move to CS1. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, I think that's a good point that you raised. I think I have the channel open here. Yeah. So as you can see, this is like the home page. If you go to playlists and uh, the playlist, I think it was called intro. Yeah, intro to Python, this one here is the one that's that has like all the basics. So you can just like go ahead and, and watch that. It's around 3.5 hours, but this gives you like an idea of like basic Python. And then you can jump to computer science one. So this playlist here, computer science one is pre-recorded lectures. In addition to these pre-recorded lectures, I will post my recordings here as well. Okay, so that's that. I saw more questions. Let me check all of them. Uh, there's the syllabus. The syllabus is on Submitty. Uh, me, Liu, your question is, can we see rubrics to see how assignments are graded? Yeah, 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 you can, you'll be able to see that. And as I said, just like be patient, wait for lab zero, lab one to be over, and then most likely you'll be in a better position to uh, know things. Yeah. Thanks, Francisco, for that answer. Yeah, they're on submittee. Uh, 
Mike, okay, so uh, yeah, you do have knowledge about Python. Uh, my uh, recommendation is lambdas is something that we cover almost in like the second last lecture. So that's like pretty advanced. And I usually encourage students to go um, with the same pace as as like we are covering things in the in the uh, course itself, right? Uh, Lauren, uh, your question. Okay, so I don't require anybody to watch anything, right? If you're attending uh, this lecture, that's fine. I don't require you to watch it again, right? It's just like I posted there anyways. If somebody was not able to attend or you had connectivity issues and all of that, you can just go and watch. This is like mostly an intro type lecture, so it's up to you. Yeah. Okay, this is important. Homework late day policy. Uh, you have late days, which means you can use them throughout the semester. Uh, once, homework, let's say the homework was due Thursday and then a Thursday night, 11.59, and that's when almost like, I wouldn't say almost, every homework is due, right? So you weren't able to finish that and it was a hard homework. So yeah, you can take one late day on that uh, and maximum two late days on one assignment. So total, in, in all, I allow three late uh, assignments where you don't lose any points, right? Otherwise, if you submit late, what happens is that we give you a zero after the due, unless you have like an excused absence. So if something happened and then uh, you have an excused absence from the student experience office, then we give you extensions, right? So unless you have something, uh, we don't give you extensions on homework. So that's the late day policy. And obviously you get eight days to finish one homework, which is uh, a lot. So most likely you shouldn't uh, need them. One advice here is that try to use these late days towards the end, uh, like towards more harder homeworks, like after homework five and on, and don't try to like use them for homework one and two. So try to like, just, it's up to you, honestly. So it's totally up to you. Yeah. Okay, academic integrity is something we take really, really seriously. And as I said, there's that collaboration policy document that I posted on the course materials tab on somebody, right? Please go and read that. So academic integrity on homeworks, I will be checking for matches. So there's this the software that we have and we run uh, everybody's code on that and then check whether there are matches and that's like really bad. So try to refrain from that. Uh, having said that, I'm okay with people discussing overall like um, their solution approaches, but try not to see each other's code. Try to go and write your own code because even when you like write code together that we have seen results in like matching and then gets things get, get complicated from there. So try not to do that. Try to submit your own work uh, because think about it. Let's say you are scoring 50 on an assignment, right? And then you thought, let me get a hundred and copy somebody else's code, right? But eventually you're gonna get a zero on, on that because we will find out that this is a match. And then in addition to that, you'll also you lose like five to 10% on the overall grade. So that's the academic integrity policy, which is like pretty uh, strict. So please go and read the collaboration policy document and try not to get into that. My recommendation is it's good that you scored 50 as compared to like getting a zero and then a minus 10 on your overall grade, right? So that's that. Anything else, please report me right now or in like in any other lecture or email me whenever you want, that's that's absolutely fine. Okay, so again, I think I've talked about lab, I just like skip this because I had many questions on labs, so that's why I began talking about labs first. But of course, you know how to join your lab this week and please make sure that you do that. Uh, we have these test dates out already. So February 25th, April 1st, I haven't, like I'm not 100% sure on the format of the exam if I'm going to update that or how much time you're going to get and all of that. So there is still time and I'm like almost a month and I'm going to come up with like a more, um, I would say, a streamlined way of, of uh, like communicating that about tests. So for now, all I have is like the dates and then we'll definitely talk about more about tests in the coming weeks. So the dates are not going to change for sure. Uh, okay, so I saw uh, Mason, your question is, do you think you can elaborate on exams a little bit? Okay, so ever since we switched to the online mode, uh, exams were like similar to what your home, what our homeworks are going to be, but slightly shorter than them. So that's, that's all I can tell you right now. That's how we've been uh, giving out exams. 
and of course i give give out uh, a week before the exam i give practice material i give back exams most likely what i'm going to do is i'm going to give a uh, fall 2020 back exams and you can use that as practice uh block not yeah so mason again which block and all you will uh, we will communicate that to you so exam block is the thursday 655 to 845 that's all and it's just two days in the entire semester right okay yeah okay that was a lot i understand <laughs> overwhelming for me as well so a lot of things to keep track of just to make things better to make you feel better there is nothing due this week I didn't make things due on the, the very first week just because I understand that there's so much to uh, look at. And uh, all I want you to do this week is just like go and explore the website, go and explore some MIDI and come back if you have questions. And questions in this class are never a problem. So I just wanted to make that clear. Whatever question you have, type it in the chat window. I try to come back to them as soon as I can, but by the end of the class, hopefully you've answered every question. So yeah, and if I'm unable to answer them, uh, most likely I'll come back with the answer in the next lecture. So nothing to worry about that. Just go ahead and ask is, is what I'm saying. Okay, so are there any questions uh, before we actually start with the material? Are there any other questions about uh, the material? And Susan, that's an excellent question. How fast the course will move? This is a pretty fast paced course. Let me tell you that. And right after homework one, things become uh, especially fast in the sense that you have a lot to submit and then you have lectures to catch up and, and all of that. So it is a, a fast paced course. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, then, yeah, the, the, uh, your question is, uh, tests will be on the submitty system as well. And the answer to that is yes. Yeah, the, the tests are on submitty. So everything is on submitty. Everything that you submit is on submitty. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And nothing to worry about tests because I am going to con communicate uh, more about them. Uh, uh, Kanak, your question is, do we need to download any software for this class? Yes, yes. Uh, so of course you need, and that's what Lab Zero is about, right? So you need to download Miniconda. And I think I forgot to go through that. And that's an excellent question. Let's go to the, the website. So this is our website, right? If you go to software installation, right, this is, this is the link here and based on whatever computer you're using so for windows mac and linux we have like separate set of instructions if you could just go ahead and follow them that's good and that's what we want you to do but just in case you tried and there are some issues that are coming up lab zero is essentially for that in addition to certain other things that we want you to to look at uh, this is what we uh, want you to do so if you can do this yourself go to software installation and install uh, miniconda and then spider that's good if you're having issues with Miniconda, my other recommendation would be to directly go and install Anaconda. And that comes with everything. That comes with Spider and, and other things. The only reason we don't ask uh, explicitly to download Anaconda is because it comes with so many other tools which we don't need in this course. So that's why we are encouraging everybody to uh, install Anaconda and Spider IDE. And I'm going to show you what Spider looks like, right? But this is something that you need to follow. Python, anything 3.6 or above is fine. Anything 3.6 and above, I think it's, there is a, a higher version right now, but anything about 3.6 and above, it's it's okay for this course. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's another important thing for the software installation. Please go to this link, software installation. Go ahead and install Python using Miniconda and Spider IDE based on whatever system you're using. And again, if you were having issues, just go ahead. And in fact, Lab Zero will help you test whether your installation was fine or not, right? So that's what Lab Zero is going to do. So if you go to the lab tomorrow, uh, that will help help you. Uh, okay. Yeah, and if you're having trouble finding this course, like uh, the link, again, I'm repeating, if you go to Submitty, log into Submitty, and then go to the course, this course home will lead you to to my uh, to the website to the course website and the course website has like this like software installation instructions. Yeah, Charlie, your question is: Is PyCharm acceptable? Well, if it's okay with you and if Lab Zero the tests in Lab Zero are fine on PyCharm, then I'm okay with if you want to use it. But the recommended IDE or the integrated development environment is Spider. Okay, I'm going to come to that in a. In a I, I wanted to come to that in the end when I actually start writing programs. So, but anyways, that's uh, we 
discuss that even before that. Okay, so what is this course all about? Uh, well, uh, this is all about uh, writing programs, uh, using programs to solve problems. And what is a program? It's not just cold, harsh logic and primitive syntax. It's rather a set of instructions that you give to the computer and to do something, right? So set of instructions could be something as simple as like you give somebody this set of instructions of go and make tea, right? It's as simple as that. So when you go and tell somebody to make tea, the only thing is uh, like humans are, are, are different than computers, obviously. And so you have to give each and every step, like each and every step has to be clearly laid out for the person uh, or for the computer if you're asking the computer to go and make tea. So that's, that's essentially what programming is to give step-by-step -step instructions to the computer to perform a, a task. And then definitely it leads to soaring creativity because as we'll see when we are solving like really complex problems, your solution could be different from mine. Your set of instructions could be different to mine from mine and, and both would solve the problem. And maybe your uh, solution was better in terms of a lot of uh, aspects of programming as we'll see, right? So that's what uh, in, in, in a, I would say the gist of programming is, right? And now, the question that, that is quite common when we begin like starting to program is that mostly we see when we start programming, we are solving these arithmetic problems, right? And so what's the difference between a computer and a calculator, right? Uh, well, the basic difference is that you can teach a computer new operations that are defined in terms of the old ones. That's something that we're going to add to what we already know a computer a calculator does. Right. So that's that's something that we'll be doing and then coming to types of problems we will study. So first, the first one to help create tools to win at words with friends. I don't know how many of you've played words with friends or seen words with friends. I haven't, but I know that it for sure that it's somewhat similar to Scrabble where you create words and then I don't know if somebody knows better then they can uh, kind of jump in and tell us but essentially we'll be dealing with text a lot. So that's the first one. Uh, let me write down dealing with text. So the very first thing was to help you win at friends. Basically we will learn to work with text uh, in this course. And then we'll also do image processing and manipulation. Now you use a lot of social media. So you know that uh, programming today is more about image processing and manipulation. So we'll do that a lot in this course. In fact, like, Two of the lectures are dedicated to that and even one of the labs. So that's that. And web searching and crawling. So getting data from the web, getting data, and then uh, presenting results using that data and manipulating that, right? So that's something that we'll do a lot. And also on the homeworks, we'll ask you to uh, get data from somewhere and present uh, certain results and so on, right? Okay. Uh, a lot of programs that work with data from Yelp, and I don't know if you're familiar with Yelp or not. Uh, so this has a lot of restaurant related data and we will learn how to work with similar data sets. So restaurant related data. Why? Because this is one of the most common uh, data sets that are available and we'll work with that a lot and we'll try to understand how to uh, create different small applications using a given data set. So, in particular, we'll be using the Yelp data. A lot of new, you'll see a lot of numerical examples starting from lecture two uh, in, in games and physical simulations. Again, in homeworks, you'll see a lot of physical simulations. But of course, the basics will be covered in the lecture itself. And perhaps a simple version of Pokemon Go, if, if problems on the homeworks, but if time permits, we can go over that as well. Uh, okay, so that's the types of, those are the type of problems that uh, you can expect. Let's quickly jump into our very first program before doing like anything else. Let's quickly write our very first program. And as is the convention in computer science, the very first program is Hello World. So how to get that? Okay, so I already talked about the software installation and the IDE that we'll be using. And maybe I'll write it down. So IDE is nothing but an integrated development environment. Let me write it down here. IDE. So whenever you encounter this, it's an integrated. It's where we write our programs. Development environment. 
and the one that we are using is known as spider right so basically this is that one place you uh, write your programs where you edit your programs and then you run your programs so things have become easier as compared to what they used to be a few years ago so we have these ides as somebody pointed out uh, there is another one pie charm there is this i think win i don't remember the exact name so there are many IDs essentially available, many platforms, so to say, where you can edit your code, you write your code and run your code. The one that we recommend in this course is uh, Spider. So this is what Spider looks like. This is what your Spider screen will most likely look like once you're done with your installation and everything. This left side window, this big left side window is known as the editor. So that's mostly where you write your log programs because this is easier to edit and uh, also easier to run. This window on the right uh, bottom, this one here, is your interpreter. So the only difference is that you can directly write the command here and quickly run it as compared to the editor where you can go on writing lines and lines of code and then execute that entire thing all by itself, right? So let me show you both, right? If I have like, I'm asking the interpreter to output hello world. That's all I'm asking it to do. And the way to do that is something that's known as a print statement. So print is a built-in function in Python. And of course, we will look at like more basic stuff going forward. But this is like the convention in computer science to write hello world, to print hello world. And that's what we're doing today. OK, so let's do that. So print and then print always comes with a parentheses. And we'll see that functions in, in Python come with parentheses anyways, right? So print and then in colon. Uh, Sorry, in quotes. Sorry about that. I don't know why I called it a colon. Hello world. And basically in quotes, you can write anything you want. Because as we will see going forward, this is a string, right? So the moment I do print hello world and then push enter, as you can see, this console shows me this uh, as an output, right? You can also, you, can, you could have done the same thing. Let me copy this and put it in the editor here, right? And execute it. But the correct convention to execute any such uh, thing in the editor is to save this as a file and then run it, right? So I can run it. There are multiple ways of running it, multiple ways of executing it. I'll show you all those ways. So let's say I don't want to save it. I just want to run this. I just want to run this line. So all I have to do is like keep the cursor here. You can see that the cursor is here, right? And you can see this black, this box here up here where my cursor is right now right this black and this black play button so if i run like just click that i can still see that this gets executed here on the right side window right so this is the second way of executing it the third is just go and save it as a file so i'll just like go and say file save and let's say i want to name it uh, hello hello one because hello already exists for me so i've just just named it hello one right now I can go and write multiple lines here. Print um, hello Python, go on, like whatever you want to write, whether in double quotes and, or in single quotes is all fine. And, and, and if you're getting overwhelmed with why single quotes and double quotes and everything, nothing to worry because lecture two, I'm going to begin with like the most basic thing ever, right? So if you're getting overwhelmed, that's fine. But just like look at it. I can say all I'm trying, the point that I'm trying to make here is that I can save these multiple lines in my hello one. All I have to do is like hit save. So everything is saved. And the good thing about this editor and this file saving thing here is that I can run all of these together. So if I hit this green red button, look at this green red button, uh, sorry, green play button here. And if I just push that, notice it runs as a file. So it tells me it's a run file and it gives me the all the output in my file, right? But I could have run it as a single line. So again, I'll take my cursor here, go to this black button here and run it. And you can see I will be able to run only that single line. Uh, I could have uh, like selected all these and then also push this black button here. And I could have again accomplished the same thing. So multiple ways of getting the output. But this was our very first program. C congratulations. We wrote our very first program. Let me take questions and then we'll go forward. Uh, okay, lots of questions. <laughs> Let me quickly go back to where we stopped. Should uh, so should we start lab zero tomorrow? Yes, Daniel. So that would be the uh, best. 
obviously, as I said, you can go to the software installation tab on the website and try doing it yourself. That's the best way out. And if you're facing any issues, uh, you can ask your TA tomorrow in the lab. And there's nothing to worry, even if the, the issue wasn't resolved then, because we have office hours throughout the week. So you can visit any of those and get that sorted, right? So hope that answers the question. Uh, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, you, Pai Chang. Yes, I think I answered that one. Lubna, your question is, if we have the textbook, what chapter would this be? I think this is chapter one. And in every lecture note, if you go to the lecture notes, for example, this PDF here, I write the name of the chapter up here, right? So this is chapter one. That's what this tells us. Um, is Python, uh, Max, your question is, is Python 3.8 okay? Yes, yes, no, that's okay. That's absolutely fine. Anything above, uh, of course, you see here that mine is 3.7, but anything above 3.6, 3.6 and above is fine. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, just do the latest one. That's fine. Uh, Eliana, your question is, can we start the lab before a lab session? Ideally speaking, always do that. That's the that's why I usually post the labs on Sundays so that you at least get started, right? So it's not too overwhelming during the lab period. And what we required earlier, as I said, when the course wasn't online, we asked students to submit it in the lab time and complete it in the lab time. But now I will definitely give you a little more, but try to finish it during the lab time. Uh, Okay, so your question is, will the lab submission be open Wednesday during lab or earlier? For lab zero, there is no submission. All you have to do is you have to show your TA or mentor uh, that your program works fine. So if you go and read the lab document, you will know what we are expecting you to do. There is nothing to submit in lab zero. It's only your installation and other things that the, the TA is going to check. And then they're going to check you off. Like there is a checkpoint essentially. So they'll just see if... It's done or not. Uh, how many hours? Uh, Shu J, your question is how many hours a day is expected to do lab? Okay, so it totally depends on you how much. Well, I think the lab period is around two hours a week. And homework, I mean, it, it varies, right? I mean, it depends on how much time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for all those who answered that question. Thank you. Okay. So that was the very first uh, pro uh, program that we just wrote. So the way it's done is, okay, so this is one of the other IDEs, the wing IDE. I think I should have updated it with SPIDER. So that's definitely not the case. We used SPIDER IDE here, and you will learn to do that once you're done with the installation. So please, again, I'm repeating, go ahead, try to do that yourself. If you're unable to do that, please take it to your TA tomorrow or day after tomorrow, whenever your lab is. and once you're able to launch Spider, it should look like this, right? Okay, so I already talked about the two windows that will appear, the editor and the interpreter, right? So this is the editor on the left-hand side, the interpreter on the right-hand side. Uh, and I'm coming to what exactly are the editor and the interpreter. But before that, and also we saw like how to load the program, run it, there are multiple ways of running it directly or run it as a file, and another important thing maybe I missed here is that this file that you're going to save will always be saved as a .py file, as you can see here on the top left, right? So every Python file is essentially a .py file. A .py file extension is a Python file. Okay, so that is uh, moving to something a bit more interesting, right? Okay, so... Now I'm going to show you a little, I wouldn't say a little, a very complex program. I'm going to talk through the, the logic. And if you don't understand that, that's absolutely fine. The whole point of showing you this particular uh, example is just to kind of demonstrate what you should expect going forward. So if you don't understand it, that's absolutely fine, right? Basically this problem that we are going to look at that is, is posed in Think Python and was taken from the NPR show car talk, right? So basically the problem that we are trying to find is find the one word in English language that contains three consecutive double letters, right? So this is a problem we're trying to find out. Uh, find all those English uh, letter, English language words that have three consecutive double letters, basically something like this, right? So get all the dictionary words, right? This is what this problem means. Get all the dictionary words and find something like 
that has like A, A, B, B, C, C, right? Three consecutive double letters repeated. Now, if you find a word that has only like two repeated and then there is something like this, then we don't consider it as the correct word, but only they have to be like one after the other and uh, like this one, right? If there is something like A, A, one, B, B, C, C, then again, this is not considered correct. So three consecutive double letters. In the English language, so that means it has to be a valid word and not something like this A, A, B, B, C, C, obviously. So that's the problem we're trying to solve using Python. And again, do not get overwhelmed when I show you the code because essentially we are trying to solve this um, in, in order to just like show you that this is the kind of problems that we'll be working with, right? So again, that's what this says. We do not intend you to understand this at all. Okay, so let's jump into the code itself. And like even before jumping into the code, why not like think a little bit about like what exactly we are trying to do and uh, what like pieces of, of, of uh, code should we put together, right? So why not like write down in like simple English language and maybe this is a good place to write because I don't see any other like plain white uh, page for me. <laughs> so, okay, so what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to find all those words in English language that have three consecutive double letters. So my step one, and let's say if I could give these steps in English, right? If I could give this direction to my computer in English is going to be, so go and get all those English words, right? So get all dictionary words maybe, right? This would be my step one. So once I have them, right? Once I have these and let's say I'm, I'm assuming my computer understands English, right? So once I have uh, all those words, what should I do with them? Uh, well, scan each word. And for each word, do something. Basically, I'm going to test all those conditions in my each word, right? So for each word, do something. And that do something, if you think about it, will be repeated for each word, right? For every word, I'm going to get the same thing. Basically, whatever that is, right? So it's a repeated functionality. So let me put it in some, some chunk that I can call again repeatedly, right? So let me put it in a block, that functionality in a block that will be repeated, right? And this, by the way, is something that, that we want something to repeat again and again, and it's the same functionality. So I usually put it in a block and that block is will be called a function going forward. Right? So let me create a function in which I'm going to put that functionality. And then let's talk about what that functionality is going to be. And that is going to be my step four, right? What is that functionality that we're looking at? Well, go and check every letter, check every letter, but wait, uh, let me think about like some, some words. So let's say the word is car. Now the length, like the number of characters in the word are just three. So there is no way I'll have like three consecutive double letters. So what does this tell me about this, this problem uh, at like in, in, in whole? So basically this is telling me that I can get uh, rid of, like even before checking all these letters, I can get, get rid of all words whose length is, whose number of, of uh, characters, uh, whose length I'm calling them, the number of characters is less than six, right? Because at least I need a length of six to get like three consecutive double letters. So maybe this should be my step one. And this is going to like bring my problem and make my problem like really simple, right? So this is like step four. And within step four, I'm writing this entire block. So for every word, I'm going to get rid of all, like get, not count the word whose length is less than six. And once I have, okay, so for other words, which means let's say my word is length six. Right, so for other words, I'm going to check letter at, at position one, position one, and see if it is equal to position two, and so on, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll do the same for check letter at position one and, and uh, is equal to position two and position three equals position four, and position five equals position six or not, right? If that's the case, this step six is uh, step five is essentially going to be 
keep that or print that or whatever you want to do that right do with that word okay if this is true if this condition is true keep that word or print that word whatever we want to do right so what you just saw here is this like entire program that we wrote but we did not write it in python rather we wrote it in english right so going forward what we are going to and this is like this is nothing but an algorithm right so you might have heard this, heard this term many times but this is exactly what an algorithm is a sequence of steps that will lead us to the solution of a certain problem which in our case was to find this like uh, consecutive uh, three consecutive double lettered words so let me go go and show you like how this entire algorithm the sequence of steps converts to actual code right and then by the time we are done with the code you would have seen many important programming constructs like a function how to read uh, data uh, how to loop through through that and the logical constructs and all of that but again i don't expect you to understand all of that you will be able to understand that in like 5 to 6 weeks from now most likely so let's look at that okay i saw a couple of questions coming up let me uh, answer those and then uh okay i'll answer pretty related questions after we have looked at this because this is important okay so as i said go to the uh, course website here and there is this tab called code written in class so everything that we write in class will be posted here in this lecture i'm doing the opposite i've already posted it there and we are going to look at it because obviously i don't expect you to to know this so obviously uh, that's what i've done here okay so here is the first line and let me actually take it into spider so that you have a better understanding of how it looks in spider okay let's take it into spider here okay so let me talk through this so this is uh, importing a library library is nothing but just like imagine it's another like a uh, larger chunk of code that does things for us that are external mostly to the python environment so this is going to get the data from outside right so we said we have to get data which is nothing but the dictionary words right so this is what's uh, what's going to do that the second part here is the function that we talked about right so we said there has to be this repeated block of code that is going to uh, get all those three consecutive pair of double letters because we have to check for every letter in the in the entire dictionary right this is nothing whenever you see this def this is nothing but a function that function is going to check if like the the uh, statement that we wrote when we were checking okay get rid of now this here is getting rid of all the letters that are greater than length 6 sorry less than length 6 right only scan when the length is 6 or more and then this here is a logical statement an if statement that is checking every sequence of of the occurrence of the word if that's true just return a true otherwise return a false and of course this is a loop so we have to loop through that entire word for example if the word was uh, i don't know apple i'm going to loop through a and then p and then p l e and so on right okay so this is my function which will be called again and again the name of my function is has three doubles so basically whenever you see has three doubles again in the code that's when you know that your function is being called because it's that one block of code that we wanted to repeat right uh, okay so this is nothing but giving it the exact url for where you'll find the dictionary words so basically this is uh, something uh, that's showing us this is how we get external data again nothing to worry about now just know that this is how uh, we are going to get external data and we are going to understand that later on now here we are processing each word and as i said notice this has three double here right so all this is doing here is counting those words right which have the three consecutive double letters and that's it right and the last part here is simply printing them depending on some logical construct so if i found no words i'm going to print obviously no words were found if i found one word i'll print one word was found and if i found more than one word then i'm going to print like these many words were found that had three consecutive double letters okay so questions doubts anything and of course i understand if it wasn't super clear that's fine the whole purpose of showing you this entire program was to get you acquainted with different programming constructs that we are going to uh, deal with and these are the ones files a function so you understand what a function is somewhat right uh, loops 
repeat the same thing, logic, getting those if statements, counting, how we accumulate counting, and then finally output and libraries. Again, we are not jumping into the details of all of these, but, but you saw that, you saw all of that in, in, in this. And maybe if this is all fine, I can try running this quickly. So here is the result that you get. So this is the output, right? So these were the words that were found in the English dictionary, four words were found, and these have like three consecutive double letters. So O, O, K, K, E, E, right? So these are the, the three consecutive double lettered words. Yeah, I saw a question, so let me take that. Uh, Daniel, your question is, did word get defined anywhere? Which word are you talking about? Okay, so here, this is just a way of uh, writing a variable in a loop. Yeah, we will definitely cover that a lot. Trust me, we spend a lot of time on loops. So, yeah. yeah, thank you, Will, for answering that. Yeah. So, as I said, these are the different programming constructs that we went over when we wrote this code. But of course, we revisit this once we have covered each of these in details. So, yeah. Okay, so let's look back at the steps we followed. And in fact, uh, first of all, like the, the very first step in writing any algorithm is to understand what the problem is really asking. So we went ahead and, and kind of rewrote that in English and tried to understand what the problem is asking. And again, my suggestion to even solving homework problems is to go and restate the problem, right? whatever it's asking you to do, just restate it in your own words. That's That should be your step number one, right? Then the second step was develop and describe a recipe for solving the problem, right? So we did that, we wrote that in English and an algorithm is usually uh, the sequence of steps that you write to solve a problem, right? And a, a better way to do that is to go and write it in English because then converting each and every line to Python code is always a better approach, right? So. Of course, like this was a sim simpler pro problem as compared to most of your homework problems. So most of these algorithms will involve multiple parts. So you can just go ahead and write an algorithm for one part and then go and execute it and check and test it and then go from there, right? This is, I think, one of the most crucial steps, right? Uh, turn your recipe into a program in formal language of Python, obviously. This will take some time for you to kind of uh, translate that because English obviously is not something that your computer understands. Your computer understands Python and that's what we're going to do going forward, right? And then finally, we did get the output by running the program using the Python interpreter. Again, I'm repeating, you could have saved this file, right? Go and do a file save as somewhere and then run it with this like green button here. That is going to execute the entire file. Okay, I saw questions. Let me... Uh... Max, your question is, do we have to comment our code? Okay, I'll come to that. I'll come to, I think that's too early to, to do that, to answer that. But yeah, we require after at least homework three, I think, we require you to write comments and I will talk about that in one of the lectures. Uh, okay, so here I think you are discussing. Yeah, Mason, if you're having difficulties installing Pillow, uh, you, that's a common problem as far as I know. And you can ask your lab TA tomorrow about it. Yeah. And that's a common error, by the way. So I've seen that. I mean, I wouldn't say like it's always there, but yeah, that's a common error and you can go and ask your TA about it. Uh, okay, so finally coming to uh, programs, compilers, interpreters, abstractions, uh, like all these words together, what do they mean? And uh, what is the relevance of abstractions? So Python itself is an interpreted la language, which means it's more like an English-like language if you look at it, right? It runs immediately and interactively by the interpreter, which is in itself another very complex program. Okay, let me show you what's actually happening. Let me draw this picture, actually. Uh, maybe here. Yeah, this is a... Okay, so this is how, so you have uh, another program that's known as um, your uh, operating system. It's, it essentially is the is another program that's written by somebody else. So most of you must be having Windows machines. Some of you have 
um, uh, your Mac and some of you have Linux, right? So basically this operating system here is, is, is helping your uh, like this hardware, uh, like the processor, the hard drive, the other parts of your computer, like a screen, a keyboard, network control device, all of that come together, right? So here you have like the storage basically and your screen, you're interacting with the screen. And this is where your applications are sitting. So the applications are sitting somewhere here. Right? So where does like Python come into picture here? So like once you have this, maybe I'll draw that again. Once here is the operating system. And then you have your storage and screen. I'm not going to repeat that. Two ways, right? And then you have all your applications that are running on your OS. So these are the apps or the applications. And then there is this Python interpreter. So this is the interpreter, which is nothing but another program that's running and interacting with your operating system. And then your Python program sits over this. So there is this Python program that you're running. So all of these are nothing but layers of abstraction that you're adding above your operating system, right? So this is the, the meaning of, of abstraction, essentially, right? So when we write and run our own program, it essentially there is a, a, another layer that you don't see, but that kind of interprets your, your code and then it runs it and gives the, the uh, output. Of the like the lecture notes is telling us, Pro, like programs in some other non-interpreted language like C, C++, and Java must be compiled, which we don't do in Python, right? Because Python sits on, on, on that layer of interpreter and it runs immediately. So we don't have to like compile it and then get the result. So that's why Python is an interpreted language as opposed to C, C++, and Java. Okay, in either case, like in both the cases, we write the programs and we require them to run them. And all that's happening is like in different languages, the difference is the different levels of abstractions that you've added, right? Uh, what, what is this abstraction? It's the details of the other program that you don't need to worry about anymore, right? So that's, again, the operating system, if you think about it, is also a program that somebody else wrote for you and it's doing some tasks for you that you don't have to worry about, right? So that is what an abstraction is. And it allows us to think about a problem we are trying to solve without thinking about the details of the other systems in the computer. So you can just like focus on the problem itself, right? And this thinking in terms of abstraction is very important to computer science. As computer scientists, as you go forward, you'll see our focus is more on not like, I would say, as I said earlier, not um, like computational thinking is the way humans solve problems. It's not trying to get humans to think like computers, right? So that's the fundamental, and that's why these layers of abstractions are added. Uh, okay, why Python? So as you saw in one of the uh, examples we did, Python has a very simple syntax. Uh, we'll see the rules of indentation and blank lines sometimes can, can be confusing, but it's more like English-like, right? And it runs like a script, so one line after the other. That's why we're using Python. and because it's an interpreted language, it provides immediate useful feedback. What it means is you get the output and you know that this is uh, what it is, right? And then we have a powerful uh, set of tools uh, that come with Python. So these are known as libraries. One of the library that you're gonna see in Lab Zero itself is the pillow library that helps us work with images. And then we'll also use other libraries going forward. That's why we're using Python, of course. And before we end this lecture, I'd like to talk about the errors that you're going to encounter. Right, so there are two major types of errors. Uh, one is the syntax error. So let me show you what a syntax error is. Uh, a syntax error is nothing but something that your interpreter was expecting and you did not give it. So for example, again, I'm writing our simple hello world. And let's say I forgot like one of these quotes here, right? So this quotation mark here did not end with a quotation mark. And you see this yellow thing coming up. This is already telling you that this is going to give you an error in Spider, but let's still run it. So this is going to come up with this syntax error, right? That tells us syntax errors are easier to spot because the the interpreter, like your Python interpreter, is going to tell you that this is a syntax error, right? UL means end of line while scanning. So this is what a syntax error is. 
uh, your interpreter was expecting something else and you gave it something else, right? The other type of error that you will encounter a lot is a semantic error, uh, which kind of means that it will let your program run and it is going to produce an output, but it is not going to be the correct. Again, we will talk a lot about semantic errors. We'll see a lot of semantic errors going forward. So basically the logic somewhere is, is missing something and it's giving you the wrong result. For example, in this one, uh, when we were doing, yeah, when we were trying to scan the words and let's say I did something wrong in the logic and instead of like these bookkeeper, I'm also getting the output as apple or orange. And then I know that I'm getting the output and it's not erroring out, but obviously apple is not the right answer, right? So that's a logical error. That's known as a semantic error. Okay, I think I saw a couple of questions. Let me go back if that's for me. Uh, okay, a lot of questions I see were on the issue with the pillow library. So that's uh, okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, shell and a command line. Mason, that's a, a good question. Of course, with the pers like from the perspective of the course, not super important. Uh, but um, yeah, of course, like when you will install Miniconda or Anaconda, whichever it is. So when you run uh, from, a, I think, yeah, I think Will, you've already answered that. So that's like shell is the Windows version of command line. So you can run all those different commands from there. Yeah. IDE, Mason, I already talked about IDE. So that's like the integrated development environment. For example, the only IDE we are using in this course uh, is uh, Spider, which you just saw, right? So for this course, don't get confused with shell and, and command line. Slowly, we'll get to all of that, right? So I don't want to confuse everybody uh, with all that like overwhelming information. For now, just know that IDE is and uh, the only IDE we are using is Spider. And an ID is nothing but a place where you write your programs, you run them, you save them. Yeah, so that's that's what an ID is. Uh, okay, so going to the Python versions, I think I've already answered this question. Uh, we keep getting these new versions, but any version 3.6 and above is fine, should be fine. Uh, again, a quick reminder, lab zero begins tomorrow. So that's Tuesday from this week. Uh, by the end of Lab Zero. And Lab Zero is nothing but basically getting you acquainted with the environment, getting things installed so that you're able to submit other things going forward, right? So by the end of Lab Zero, you should have visited the Submitty website, which is this, this is the link that's given here. Um, gone to the course page. Again, we've seen that multiple times today, so please go ahead and do that. Follow the instructions to the Python environment on your computer. So again, I'm repeating that. Please go ahead on the website, go to software installation, and please install that yourself. That's the best uh, you can do right now. But if you are running into issues, of course, your lab TA should be able to answer those. So that's what we expect you this week to do. Finish lab zero. Again, lab zero is about all about installation. In addition to that, maybe I forgot to finish, uh, cover this part. Uh, we, I mean, I, I obviously I'm not going to go and check that, but we um, recommend that you go and create a Dropbox account to store your homeworks and lab solutions and everything that's related to the course, right? This is important because we've seen multiple times people coming back and saying that we couldn't sub submit so-and-so on time because our computer crashed, right? So if you have a backup, a cloud-based backup, essentially you'll have a copy of that. So uh, that, that, that way it is going to be easier for you. Uh, and not GitHub, yeah, so I, I like GitHub myself, but Please don't use them for coursework because as we talked about academic integrity, their things can easily be shared and mostly it's public. So it's better you use Dropbox. Uh, okay, let me take questions. I think that's it from my end for this lecture actually. Uh, but yeah, I can take questions. And if you have uh, questions, please go ahead and ask. That's, uh, okay, Ms. Uh, Thank you, Huey, for answering all those questions for me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Is that Huey or how do I pronounce uh, it? It's uh, Huey. Huey? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for answering all those questions. Yeah, Huey. So yeah, as you said, uh, please go ahead and visit the YouTube channel. There you have the intro video, you have the computer science one playlist, 
please go and check those playlists and then most likely you'll get answer to most of your questions i will be posting this recording like for today's video today's lecture as well on uh, youtube in, in in a short while and yeah so that's it i think from my end if you don't have questions you're free to leave make sure you finish your lab zero and see you i think on thursday yeah thank you yeah thank you everyone thank you Thank you.